Well, praise the Lord. Brian Hampton here at Holy Fire Ministries come to talk to you about what I've titled the dunamis power of God. And, you know, uh, I, I believe this is what God is getting ready to pour out his glorious power upon the earth, the likes that we've never seen before in our lives. And I know that a lot of people have gotten used to the darkness. They've gotten used to the trouble. And they uh, believe that, you know, probably God's just going to rapture his church out of here. But I, I don't believe that God is coming back for a church uh, that is on life support. But I believe that he's coming back for a powerful, a glorious bride that is doing the the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and I know uh, that the churches uh, many of them are doing their best and uh, but I'm here to tell you that there is not any kind of substantial uh, move of God happening uh, like it did in the book of Acts and I believe that before God comes back that the former and the latter reign is going to be combined that there is going to be a move of the Holy Ghost like we've never experienced in our life that we are literally uh, going to have our jaws drop to the floor at the miracles, at the signs and the wonders that we see God perform and at the magnitude of people that are going to be saved. Hallelujah. God does not desire that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And there's a lot of people out there and God's have been working on them. You can see it if you open your eyes. I'm going to bring a little bit of information before you today and hope Hopefully you'll be able to see that God, even though maybe in your life it is difficult times, maybe in the city of Knoxville, I do not see a lot of things happening. But praise God, across this nation, across this world, God is doing great and mighty things. And I'm going to try to help you today. I know God gave me some articles that come across my computer and, and it encouraged me. And I'm going to try to encourage you today because, praise God, if we look in the natural, it doesn't look good. But God has not told me to look in the natural, but he's told me to look to his word, which is supernatural, which is powerful, which is living, praise God, which brings life. Hallelujah. So... You know, I'm here to tell you that when things get their worst, that's when God does His best. All throughout the Bible and all throughout history, as a matter of fact, uh, it's always seemed like there was no way out, and that's when God uh, showed up and did the impossible. You know, we think that America perhaps is not in good shape and that it's not going to survive much longer in the state that it's in, but I'm here to tell you that when things seem their worst, that is truly when God will deliver like no one can deliver. You know, many people are focused on what they see in the news. Many people are focused on their own lives that are filled with trouble. And I'm not trying to uh, d diminish the troubles that you're going through. I'm not trying to say that they're not real. I understand I have troubles also and I'm looking for a brighter day. But I'm here to tell you that, praise God, we're not to focus on those things. But the Bible Bible says, it tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So praise God when you begin to see bad things happening around you and even maybe in your life personally, then praise God, get into the presence of God, get into the Word of God and praise God, begin to praise Him and thank Him for these things that are of a good report, for these things that are honest, for these things that are pure. Begin to lift up your hands and say, God, things aren't looking so good right now, but God, I just thank you Lord for the things that are good in my life, God, that when many people are struggling. God, I'm still the Lord doing pretty good. I mean, if you look around you, then you might see that you're doing pretty good if you quit focusing on the negative and on the bad things and on the way that you feel. You know, the way that we feel, the emotions that we feel are very strong and they have such an impact on us. That's why it is so important as never before to get into the presence of God, uh, to get into uh, uh, 
the word of God to fast and to pray. You know, when God said, uh, when you fast, don't be as the hypocrites and don't have a countenance, you know, that looks like you're fasting. And he has said, when you pray, uh, don't pray as the hypocrites that pray out loud so that they might be heard of many people. Uh, so praise God, I don't see him distinguishing between the two. I believe that it's just import, as important for you to fast as it is to pray. I believe it's just as relevant today as it ever has been. I believe it's more important as a matter of fact as the trial gets hotter and as the days go on and times are tough that we do whatever it is to that we need to do. Uh, praise God to keep ourselves looking at the positive things, not letting anything creep into our spirit uh, that's going to take our peace, that's going to take our joy, uh, but praise God that we get into His presence that we might be sustained. Hallelujah. Uh, there are great things, praise God, coming and, and already happening. And I'm going to give you, like I said, some of the headlines that I uh, come across. But I'm here to tell you that the devil will do his uh, very best to snuff out anything that God does. He'll try to hide it, uh, praise God, but he's not going to succeed. Uh, praise God, there's getting ready to be a move where the things that have been suppressed are no longer going to be suppressed. But there's getting ready to be a move of God's Spirit on the inside of us that is going to be uh, so far removed from what the church has been used to uh, that, praise God, the things that you used to be interested in, uh, there's not going to be any interest in those things anymore. Uh, people aren't going to be laying out of church to go to the lake. They're not going to be uh, laying out of church to watch Sunday football or whatever it is people do. Uh, but, praise God, they're going to say, you know what, I, I really like uh, football and all of that, but you know what, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't, I don't have time for it no more because I can tell you that there's something going on at my church. There's a move of God happening. And every time I go there, I'm astonished. Once again, over and over, God is doing the supernatural. He is filling His people with a, His Spirit as never before. And I am seeing and feeling and uh, having an understanding of how great my God is as never uh, before. And I don't just quite frankly don't have time no, uh, I can't go with you today. I gotta go to church. If you want to know what life is, if you want to know what it means to have abundant life, uh, forget it and come on and go with me because it's happening where God is. Hallelujah. You know, the there's a, a story where Satan was revamping his arsenal. He was uh, uh, going with second generation weapons, you know, new and improved, if you will. And uh, he was having a sale. So uh, one guy come up and said, hey, Satan, what is that over there in the corner? And he said, oh, that's one of my most prized weapons. He said that uh, is very, very expensive. Most people can't afford it because it is what brings the most trouble to most Christians' life. And he said, well, what is it called? He said, it is called discouragement. And I'm here to tell you that many ha ha people have been have given in to discouragement and the things that they once believed were was going to be absolutely in their life. They're starting to think, well, you know, what I don't know if the promise applies to me anymore because of the way that I feel I'm telling you you cannot go by the way that you feel but you've got to go by what the word of God says you've got to appear to the truth of God you've got to believe him when it does not even seem possible uh, praise God and he will honor his word uh, praise God those personal prophetic words that were given to you have not changed God has not uh, changed his mind but praise God he will uh, bring you through your trouble praise God to the other side and you won't even know how it is that you got to where it is that God brought you from and to but praise God you'll be happy you'll be exceedingly glad praise God if you suffer with him you're going to reign with him and like I've told you before uh, roughly 20 some odd years ago I went through something so terrible and I thought man 
man, I was never going to have any kind of normal life again, that I was perhaps going to end up on a social security check. I didn't even know if, if I was going to be able to have anything in my life because I, I thought I was going to lose it all. I felt like I was losing my mind. It was the worst thing that I ever went through in my life. But praise God, when it was over, my joy returned, my strength returned, my desire to do things returned. Praise God, and I was a changed person. And I'm here to tell you that it's not just me going through this thing, but it is the body of Christ that is going through so much trouble right now and praise God, God told me he said this trial that you're going through right now will be like the one that you went through 20 some odd years ago <clears throat> Praise God, you'll get to the end of it and you'll come out and you won't even understand how you got to where you were, but you're going to have your joy returned. You're going to have your peace restored. You're going to have ambition. You're going to have drive. You're going to feel good in your mind and in your body again. And I know that I know that I know that there are people out there that are desperate, that there are people that are crying out and saying, God, if you don't help me, there is no help for me. Uh, but praise God, I'm here to encourage you that at the end of this thing, uh, that you're going to have the joy of your salvation restored. You're going to have your strength restored. Some of you feel like you don't have enough strength in your body hardly to get through the day, but nevertheless, you make it through the day. And you're thinking, man, if this is what life is, then Lord God, come and take me to be where you are, Lord, because it's just not anything I want to partake of anymore. But I'm here to tell you that you're going to have your strength restored. I'm here to tell you that you're going to have your ambition, your tenacity, your determination, your zeal, uh, praise God, restored, that there is coming a joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. So praise God, do do not let the current situations in your life dictate what comes out of your mouth or what you believe. But trust in the Lord. Trust in Him who started a good work in you. Trust that He is able to finish it. And praise God, there's nothing that the devil can do about it. He can roar, but he's not a lion. He is a defeated foe. Praise God. And you're getting ready to see how defeated he is is as God shows up and does the impossible there's going to be a shout throughout the whole world a reverberation of how good that God is and that none can deliver like the God that we serve hallelujah so get ready get ready hallelujah God is going to do great things hallelujah in the future and is still and is and at this point doing great things God is always doing great things. Whether we see it, whether we feel it, or whether we know it, God is always doing great things. But just keep in mind, He's not changed His mind about the things that He's told you that He would do for you. You just simply have to go through the test. So He's been dropping some news articles. And like I said, I want to read them to you because they brought hope to me and I believe that they will bring hope to you. The one headline reads, A move of God as thousands gather for baptism across the United States as people are wanting hope. Uh, praise God. If you're wondering why God has let this thing gets so dark. If you have wondered why God is letting this thing play out the way that He is, it is because it is what was needed to shake the people of God and to cause them to break free from the hold that this world has had on them, to break free from the complacency and to realize that what they thought was living for God wasn't so much right. It wasn't exactly what God wanted 
payment for them. It was something much greater. And as you see this thing get uh, uh, worse, as you see troubles come more and more, uh, praise God, people are being woken up and they are breaking the power uh, that uh, this world that the devil has held uh, them with. And they are uh, seeking God. They are uh, wanting hope. And I'm here to tell you, you can look in every venue, in every avenue, in every facet of society uh, for something that's going to bring you hope. Uh, but praise God, there is a one place where you're going to find it, uh, where you're going to be able to find sustained peace and hope and joy, and that is in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, uh, the Savior of the world, the one that died for all of humanity. And if you'll accept Him as your Lord and Savior, He will come in there and the Bible says he will sup with you. He will give you joy. He will give you peace. He will sustain you. Uh, praise God. He will give you victory. It may not always be a great times, but praise God, you'll always know that you serve one that said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll go with you till the very end till you hear me say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, anyways, the article goes on to say just not just in Sarasota, Florida, but in California, uh, Texas, and near rivers in the Midwest, in Tennessee and Missouri, uh, people are being saved and baptized. Another article reads, in California, 12,000 Christians baptized yesterday in the largest synchronized day of water baptism in American history, and still more are uh, coming in. The headline says that at the University of Tennessee, hundreds gave their life to Jesus and were uh, baptized. Uh, Morio Murillo Ministries has been sitting up tents in the worst parts of New York and California, uh, getting ready here in the future to go into San Francisco, and they're having to buy tents often because the crowds are swelling outside of the tent. I think if I remember correctly, and this may not be correct, but I think he said every two months they were having to buy new tents to hold the people because they are so hungry, because they are so desperate. And I'm here to tell you that this thing that's happening in our country was necessary. That's why the people are desperate. That's why the people are hungry. That's why the people are looking for hope because of the desperation. And they're finding it in Jesus Christ, this thing that seems so terrible to so many of the people of God has been necessary for the body of Christ, for those that are lost to see that what they thought was going to sustain them will no longer work, but it's going to take the Lamb of God. It's going to take Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to deliver them, to sustain them, to give them the hope and the peace that they have so desperately been looking for. You know, there's an old song that says when you, just about the time you think it's all over, uh, God will cause it to happen again. And I'm here to tell you that we're uh, not getting ready to leave, but praise God, we're getting ready uh, to be uh, filled with the power and the anointing and praise God, the gifts of God as never before. And we're going to do the work of God because there are hundreds of millions of people that need to be saved. And when God, is, as you see, is pouring out His Spirit across the land, uh, people are getting baptized and baptized people, usually salvation happens first. Uh, so a lot of these people are getting saved. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you that this is just the very beginning of what God is going to do, not just in the United States, but in the world abroad. He's going to go everywhere that he is welcome. And I'm here to tell you that he's going to go to some places where he's not been welcome because you can't say, uh, you can't you, God, you can't come into my city. Uh, praise God. God, when he gets ready, he will do things that will just astonish and blow uh, people's minds. That's what my God uh, does. Hallelujah. 
We're talking today about the dunamis power of God. The Greek word for dunamis used in the New Testament refers to power, miraculous works, and special gifts that God calls us to manifest in individual believers through the Holy Spirit's anointing. The word dunamis in the English means a dynamite or explosive power. In the New Testament, it is used 120 different times. What they should have said is that words that are synonymous or words having the same meaning as dunamis are used in the New Testament because I couldn't find it at all in the New Testament. The Bible says in Mark 16 and verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The three things that I want to bring out of this scripture is these signs will follow. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, you know, we don't, uh, I've never been around anybody that handled snakes in a church and if I go into a church I'm and I see somebody handling a snake, I'm taking off out the back door. Uh, God did not mean for us to handle snakes but we do have the story of where Paul uh, was uh, shipwrecked on the island and uh, he got bitten. He was bitten by the viper and all the natives looked at him uh, and waited for him to swell up and die because this snake is extremely poisonous uh, but he took it and he grabbed a hold of it because of the power of the Spirit of God on the inside of him and he threw it into the fire and he did not deal a uh, die but he lived and he declared the works of God to those natives and many were saved and believed on God and you know that I would tell you that if anybody I believe this when it comes to the poison part I believe what it's saying that is if you do ingest something accidentally or if somebody were to perhaps poison you that you're not going to die if you're in right standing with God that praise God until it's your time to leave here I remember a guy just just uh, about a year ago was poisoned with pl pl plutonium or something close to that. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that uh, just right, but he, 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 he became very sick but he did not die. And I don't know if he was saved at the time that he was poisoned, but I will tell you that since then, he has become a believer in Jesus Christ, and he lives to this day and is doing great works for the Lord himself. Uh, so praise God. Just wanted to clear that up for people that think that Christians handle snakes or that Christians drink poison. There may be some that do, but I'm here to tell you that uh, this is not what this means. But praise God. Uh, these these signs will follow them that believe. They shall cast out demons in the name of Jesus. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall speak in tongues. And you know what? If you're if you're ashamed of that kind of behavior, if you're ashamed of the move of God, then that's just, you know, that's your business to be ashamed. But praise God, I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm Pentecostal and I'm never going to be anything different. Uh, praise God because he is the same uh, yesterday, uh, today, and forevermore. And praise God, instead of the church trying to get away uh, from uh, the power of God, they ought to embrace the power of God because I'm here to tell you that what's going on in a good portion of the churches in America today is not sufficient uh, for what the people need. What they need is the anointing uh, that destroys the yoke. Uh, they need the move of the Holy Holy Ghost as a never before in this one church that used to have the denomination on their church they took it off and I'm not going to mention the denomination I'm not looking to sour anybody on, on anybody or anything but they took it off because they did not want people to know that they were associated with that particular denomination and I'm talking to the lady that told me about it and I'm thinking well if they did 
you take it off the sign and it is a Pentecostal denomination, then that makes me think that when you go into the church that they're going to alter uh, their behavior also. And I've been in churches that used to uh, shout the house down where the power of God did move and many of them have uh, become very quiet and very uneffectual. And there's nothing much happening because they were embarrassed by uh, the move of God. They were embarrassed uh, by the power of God. I'm not going to be embarrassed, praise God. I'll take all that you don't want. Give it to me. I'll take it, praise God, because that is what is going to sustain the church. That is what is going to bring a deliverance to the church. That is what is going to cause the church, praise God, uh, to be what God has always wanted it to be. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I'm here to tell you that if it said it, then praise God, that's what he meant. The search, you know, for the past 50 years, you know, even though God has been saving people and God has been uh, filling people with His Spirit and God has been healing people and God has been doing uh, miracle signs and wonders, it's not been too much in the land that we live in. And I believe that a good reason for that is because there was a law in effect and I can't mention certain things or they won't even let this air, but I'm here to tell you there was a law in effect that caused caused us to be able to legally uh, destroy the lives of the innocent. Uh, but I'm here to tell you almost approximately two years ago that that law was overturned. And I'm here to tell you if that is not a telltale sign that God is not up to something, uh, praise God, I do not know what is. Who would have imagined that that law would have been overturned in that particular period of time with the people that were in power. But praise God it was, and I'll tell you what that was. That was a continual a blood sacrifice that has brought a curse on this country for the past 50 years. But praise God, two years ago it was overturned. So I believe God is getting us ready. Hallelujah. Because of the blood sacrifice that was made to Satan is no longer the law of the land. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Also, the church began to compromise. Touched on that just a moment ago, just a little bit. They begin to compromise the doctrine and many denominations have went completely off the rails and begin to teach a doctrine that is false and have let all manner of evil come into their denominations and you're beginning to see it take hold and take root in the land. But praise God, just about the time that you think that, uh, that the devil is getting a foothold and that he's going to take over, uh, God is going to raise up and cause... Uh, this trouble uh, to be done away with. He's going to raise up people and he is going to deal with those that have been falsely teaching uh, lies in the, in the church and he is going to bring uh, deliverance. Hallelujah. Another thing, Americans have been caught up in the past 50 years, especially in you know, their things, their phones, their houses, their cars, their boats, their football, and all those things, and not necessarily any of those things are sinful or are bad, but I think that they took a hold of the gift that God gave them prosperity, and they began to put God on the back burner, so God said, if you're more interested in your plastic, and your metal, and your rubber, and your cheap entertainment, instead of being in my presence, I'll give Give you what you want. Uh, but praise God, I believe that through the tough times that we're going through that people are starting to see uh, that praise God, the things they thought uh, were going to fulfill them are just not going to fulfill them. That they need God. Hallelujah. For many, I know <clears throat> that this probably seems impossible. That God's going to have this great, miraculous outpouring. 
that is going to supersede, I believe, anything that we've ever seen in the past 6,000 years on the face of the earth. It's going to be a culmination of everything, uh, plus more, plus more, plus more. I believe that miracles, signs, and wonders are going to become commonplace in the church, and it's not just going to happen occasionally, uh, but praise God, it's going to happen all the time. I believe that, praise God, that there's been a many a people that perhaps for generations have been sick in the church and have been crying out to God saying, Lord, heal me, deliver me, God, from this infirmity. Lord, heal me. And they have walked away disappointed, perhaps going through prayer lines saying, uh, pray for me, I've got this. And they walked away only to be uh, disappointed. Uh, many people have wanted to do the will of God and have hungered and thirsted after righteousness and said, God, pick me, choose me, let me be a part of it. They have laid awake at night and envisioned what it would look like and how that they might be able to be a part of it, but they were never able to possess the anointing that they needed to do it, no matter how hard they tried. But I believe that, praise God, we have been uh, perhaps waiting for decades. You've got to understand <clears throat> maybe, you know, that Jesus waited 30 years before he began his uh, ministry. The Bible says he learned obedience through the things uh, that he suffered. Uh, so praise God, we've been learning obedience uh, through the things that we have suffered. Uh, we've been learning how to get wisdom. We've been learning how uh, to get rid of some of the things that perhaps that we, uh, you know, let become a part of our lives when we were lost. And those things interfered with the work of God. But we got saved and God's been working on us. Uh, so praise God, don't think that, well, you've just been in this race for so long and you've never obtained and you're never going to obtain. Uh, but remember again, once again, remember uh, the promises of God that He has given to you. He will bring them to pass at the appointed uh, time. You know, if I were uh, to tell you that this country, that the dollar, and I, I'm not at all saying this is going to happen, I'm just saying if I were to tell you that the dollar, the United States dollar was going to be replaced by another currency, you would say, you're crazy. It's always been. You know, and that's the way we look at the things of God. Well, you know, it's been good to be a Christian and there's nobody like the God that I serve. And man, I wouldn't give him up for anything. I'm not trying to diminish him at all. For he, he has never been imperfect. He's always been perfect. He's always been good. He's always been just as powerful today as he was 2,000 years ago, as he was 5,000 years ago. I'm not saying anything about the Lord. He is fabulous. But praise God, we just think that because the church, because we've been limited to only be able to see certain things happen, that we're not going to ever see anything that looks like the book of Acts. We're not going to be able uh, to experience that. Uh, we need to break free from that type of thinking and realize that the promises of God supersede what we have been experiencing. That praise God, all we have to do is believe in that eventually at the appointed time God will show up and do what God said He will do. You know, if you look in the Bible, we see uh, the story of Sarah uh, and Abraham, how they waited 25 years for the promised uh, child Isaac, and how that uh, she even made the mistake, and, and Abraham did also, uh, to, to, for him to go into his handmaiden and to have a child, uh, because she believed that the promise was unobtainable. And then we have, uh, you know, the story of uh, Joseph, and he had a dream, and praise God, it took roughly 22 years for him to be able to see that dream uh, fulfilled, and we got to understand that 13 of those years he spent as a slave or in a prison. Uh, David was anointed king by uh, Samuel, and then roughly 15 years later, after much, much, much trouble, uh, David became king of Israel, and it 
you were able to get a, a, you know, up close to them and say, hey, was it worth it? I believe that all uh, four of them would say, yeah, absolutely, it was worth it. For I, when I obtained the promise, I had the time of my life, praise God. And I believe that there's been stories, uh, praise God, after that, all down through the history of time where people just like you and people just like me have experienced situations in their life where they were given promises and they went through great trouble and great adversity but at the end of it, praise God, they came through it and they obtained the promise and if it were written down we would be able to rejoice and know that the same things that they experienced, we are experiencing and if we're willing to go through the bad times or we'll get to the good times or we'll get to the rejoicing part i want to close with this last little story here and god put this in my heart i was getting my hair cut the, the, the other day and god said preach on dunamis and he said preach on this particular story and i i believe i've preached it before in the past but it bears repeating a you know, there was a service in 1957 uh, down in Alabama, and Brother R.W. Shambach was preaching this story, I think, 40 years in the future, in the late 90s. Uh, I know it was in the 90s, uh, but maybe even in the late 90s. He was still preaching uh, this sermon. He was down there with Brother A.A. A. Allen, and uh, there was this lady that came from Knoxville and drove down to Alabama, and she had a child that had 36 different uh, physical problems. He was born without uh, sex organs. He, he had club feet. Both of his feet were just club feet. He could not see. He could not talk. He could not hear. The doctor said he'll not live uh, past his first year and I believe uh, when she took him down uh, to that service he was four uh, years old so praise God it's just like the devil saying hey, your dream's over with uh, uh, you know like uh, they, they were told that child would not live and, and the devil's trying to tell you your dream is over with you'll never live long enough to see that come to pass it's not going to happen uh, for you but thank God for a mother uh, that would not give up up on her child and she went down there and there were uh, you know I don't know how many nights of service but uh, there were quite a few nights of service and she uh, finally went up to R.W. Shambach after one of the meetings and she said you know I'm down here and I've been at every service and I've given money at every service and and I had to pay for a motel room and I had to uh, you know pay to eat and I'm down to my last twenty dollars and if he doesn't call my number tonight, I'm not going to get my boy prayed for. And, uh, you know, back then, I guess you had cards you filled out and, and they would, you know, say number 22 or, or, or sister so-and-so uh, come to the front. I don't know how it worked, but her number had not been called. And R.W. Shambach said, lady, I'll tell you what, if your number's not called tonight, I will take the boy to Brother uh, Allen's room and we will pray for that child. Well, anyways, the service began uh, to, you know, start and Brother Allen got up there and he began to tell, uh, you know, he had an open vision as uh, R.W. Shambach box said that many times he would and 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 he was talking about how that he saw a child in a hospital and well he went on a little further and he said uh, this child has 36 different uh, diseases and he went he said and by the way that child is in here with his mother and he said a lady bring that child up here and as he the woman uh, began to uh, let me go back a little bit because I I, I, I missed this part I forgot to tell his part. Before this transpired, he said, I'm going to take up a faith offering. And he said, what a faith offering is, is giving something that you don't have. And R.W. Shambach said he seen that woman take off from close to the back of the arena and that she made it up there before anybody else and threw her money in the bucket. And he said, you know, I just couldn't resist. I had to see what she threw in the bucket. And he said he looked and it was $20. It was that $20 that she said was all the money that she had left to get back to Knoxville. Now, maybe she had bought some groceries 
groceries at the store and had something to eat and maybe her a tank you know, gas tank was full of gas but she gave her last $20 uh, because she believed uh, that God was able uh, to do the impossible well anyways the point of the story was that anyways uh, uh, brother Allen called that lady up there and began to hold uh, that child the last night and praise God he said to the people there were approximately 3400 uh, people in the auditorium and he said pray and the people began to pray and all of a sudden uh, R.W. Shambach said he was following brother Allen closely because he was really interested to see that God what he was going to do he knew that God was going to do something because he had uh, talked to the lady and the way that things had transpired he knew that God was going to do something great and he talked about that little boy and he said that his tongue hung outside of his mouth uh, you know like most you no know, our, our mouths you know naturally are inside of our mouths but this kid's just hung outside on its chin and all of a sudden, he said that tongue uh, began to snap in. He said that tongue snapped uh, back in that boy's mouth. He said those eyes be were healed. He said his speech was healed. He said that those feet that were club feet, he said, he said God began to, right before his very eyes, uh, turn those uh, club feet into regular feet, normal human uh, feet like most people are born with. Anyways, the story goes that child was healed of all uh, 36 different uh, things that were wrong with him and uh, he said that as uh, brother Allen set that child down that he uh, knew how to walk already that he began to run uh, to his uh, mother he uh, recognized his mother who he had never seen and he spoke out of his mouth and he said mama well he should not known how uh, to be able to use that tongue he should not have recognized his mother and he should not have been able to automatically know how to walk uh, but I'm here to tell you that God is getting ready to show up and he's getting ready to do things like that once again and praise God uh, the people of God are going to be astonished and the people that are coming to God are going to be astonished he said at the end of that thing that all of a sudden he looked to his right and there were 10 to 13 people in wheelchairs and that all of a sudden as if somebody had come commanded them to stand up that they all stood up out of their wheelchairs at one time but nobody was over there praying for them nobody was telling them anything but praise God the spirit of God uh, moved upon them and they got up healed and completely recovered and restored uh, by the miracle working power of God he said on the other side there were uh, uh, several people laying in beds with spinal uh, with severed spinal cords and all kinds of problems and all of a sudden they begin to get up and that they were miraculously made completely whole by the power of God. He said that people were coming down and throwing their hearing aids. He was able to recognize them because he said back then in 1957, he said they were as big as transistor radios. They would hang out... Uh, on the outside of your shirt and, and then they would run a cord into your ear and he said they were throwing their glasses off and he said to the best of his knowledge that he that everybody in that service was completely uh, made whole of every infirmity of every sickness uh, praise God that they had and uh, he said like I said 30 to 40 years into the future he was preaching this sermon and he said I've never seen it like that before that service and I've never seen it like that since then and he said I felt like the Lord told me that's what it's going to be like in the last days uh, when God pours out his spirit upon all flesh uh, praise God there's getting ready I believe uh, to be the power of God poured out without measure and praise God all those that have been waiting and anticipating and looking and searching and knocking uh, praise God uh, for God to answer them and to heal them and to cause them to walk with the anointing that they have so desired that praise God he is getting ready to do it while saving hundreds of millions of people and I just believe that emphatically I believe that absolutely I believe it as sure as I'm standing here I believe it's going to happen 
So, you know, you're discouraged right now and things aren't so great and, and they're not great for me. No, I, I, you know, I fight just to keep my head up. Sometimes I have to fast lately because if I don't, man, I can't seem to get a, a decent prayer out. And then I fall into despair and I fall into this discouragement that I'm talking about. And the reason that I'm telling you this is not to bring you down and, and say, woe is me. But I'm here to tell you that, praise God, what you're going through is not an isolated event. God has not uh, isolated you and said, I'm going to work on him. But praise God, what you're going through, I believe that the majority of the body of Christ is going through. Uh, but praise God it is not to our detriment but it will be a praise God victory for us when that thing that we have been anticipating and desiring and wishing and knocking and asking and seeking for comes to fruition so I would lift up my eyes I would lift up my head and look to the hills from where my help does come from I would cry unto the Lord thank you God for what is coming. I know that times are difficult. I know that there are times when, Lord God, I'm in despair. Lord God, when my faith maybe is not what it should be, but Lord, I pray, God, that you will help thou my unbelief, God, and help me to get into your presence, Lord God, and to thank you, God, for all the good things, Lord, that I do have. Lord God, I thank you for running water. I thank you for air conditioning. Conditioning, Lord. I thank you, God, that I have enough. I thank you, Lord, God, that Lord, that you, God, that started a work in me, that you will finish it, God. That, Lord, that you have not lied to me, but, God, you have given me a truth that I can stand on and that nobody can take from me. I begin to bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the things that he has done for you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, that you bless his name, that you give thanks, that you live with an attitude of gratitude and thank him for what is coming. I'm here to tell you it's coming. Thank him. Uh, praise God for the greatest outpouring that has ever been seen once again by any man, a woman, or child that has ever lived on the face of the earth. If you can not believe that, then praise God. Uh, believe uh, that God is going to do something great. I believe that He's going to do something that is going to be far removed from what anybody on the face of the earth has ever seen. Like I said, if I told you a lot of things, you know, you'd say, well, you're crazy because we have become so dependent upon what we think is normal and it can never change but I'm here to tell you that God can do anything that he can change anything and that he will honor his word well anyways that's all I've got for you today I pray that you uh, will have your faith increase that you will realize that the horribleness of the things that we are going through will not last always but praise God there is coming a glory to the body of Christ there is coming a salvation to hundreds of millions of people and remember the stories uh, that I told you about the people that are getting baptized and the people uh, that are getting saved across this land for I do believe that this is the beginning of a revival that is going to supersede anything and everything that we've ever seen. Praise God. Over and out in the name of Jesus. Amen.